little bit of an update video. Um, I started making a video there last week and unfortunately my batteries died, um, but uh, it went a little something like this. A little bit of an update, uh, good news. I finally got some stuff in. Um, picked this up to, this is what I've been waiting for off of eBay right there. Of course the kit's not complete because I have some things out of it right now because we're gonna play with it today. My first time ever using an airbrush is today. I'm gonna do it right on here camera to see how it goes, see what happens, and maybe uh, somebody out there can give me some tips, but uh, this is the exact same kit that Big Al uses. Um, it's a double action um, internal uh, mix. Uh, Mixed up some stuff here. This is kind of known as the mud mixture. Uh, I've been talking to Big Al the last couple days. He's been helping me out, but uh, he's supposed to be calling me later on today to kind of give me an idea of the best way to, to work with this. He's gonna kind of show me his, but uh, you know what? I've got this airbrush. I've been waiting for it for a long time. I mentioned to use it, so this is what it looks like. Again, exact same as what he has. The black handle there, metal, double action. Let's just put this on here and see what happens, because this is my first time ever using one. Nothing worth more than trying it out. So we're not gonna go on trains today. Uh, I'm not gonna wreck a train. I've never done this before. I don't know if my mixture is right. I just uh, shook this up here. It was in a bottle. It's a bit of a, uh, got some burnt umber in there, some black, got some uh, country twill. Uh, it's all full car paint, um, exactly what uh, he's kind of gone with. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's try it out, see what happens. So I know that uh, the first action is you push down that's your air. You're not getting anything. See, I'm not putting paint in anything. It's uh, the uh, the pulling the back part of this uh, right here on the airbrush. That's gonna feed your paint. So, oh, nice, not bad. This is actually. It just takes a little bit of getting used to. So I'm just, uh, I'm not doing any fine lines or anything. I'm just getting a feel for it right now. Just pushing it down and seeing how much paint. I'm finding that the, uh, the spray on it is quite, uh, quite thick. It's uh, very large. See, that's what I've got so far, you know, just doing those little bit of spurts and everything. I'm finding it uh, quite wide. I am running it right now at about 50 PSI. Uh, some people say you don't need that much. Uh, that's what Big Al uses, so that's what I'm trying. So, I mean, I think my problem is, is I think my paint is a little too thin. Um, I think it's too watered down. I didn't, uh, I'm just messing with measurements right now. But I mean, of course, if you were doing anything as in mud spray on your uh, train, I mean, you can kind of see, that's the before, and nice some white, this is the after, you can maybe see, I yeah, get it out of it. Uh, I'm not sure. I think I'm gonna have to do some playing around, playing with my mixtures and everything, but I just wanted to... Anyways, I just wanted to uh, kind of give you an update, see where we're going with that, and uh, I'll keep you updated on how my progress goes. I'm gonna keep playing with this, and uh, before we go weathering the trains, we'll, uh, we'll try it out keep in touch so uh, anyways after messing with that video a little bit and uh, um, getting a feel for the brush um, I learned a few things so I'll just show you so here's my airbrush right here um, I was saying that it was spraying a little wide um, and I found out that you can take this off right here and right here there's an adjuster right there and that there will affect your spray on kind of how wide or how thin you want the spray to, to be going on your paper or say trains when, uh, when I get doing that. Um, however, um, because my batteries died, um, I got a little antsy. Um, I just recently got some more batteries, so I just put them in there. I'm like, okay, I better get this video done just to kind of get it up. But I want to show you what I did. Um, I was messing with the brown. And uh, the brown still wasn't kind of working for me, so I said, well, let's just see how my fade paint is. Uh, this is my fade paint right here. Uh, basically, it's just uh, water, and uh, I put some uh, white paint in there. Um, to, I don't know, enough to be able to make 
it looked like milk anyway, you don't want it to be thick. Um, and then I tinted it a little bit with, um, I put a bit of burnt umber, I believe it was burnt umber, and I just put a few drops in there, and uh, just to tint it, like you don't want very much. You can see that it's just it's just that blistering white, the, the light's coming in from the window making it look super white right now, but I mean, it's just, it's not bright white, so it just gives it that tint. So I said I wanted to try it out. So I sprayed it uh, on that yellow CN car that uh, I said I was gonna be doing first and uh, I got right into it. I started doing it and even because I didn't have batteries, I said, you know what, I wanna just do it. And here was the final product. Right there. Um, I, I sprayed it down with the, uh, the tint there, the white, to fade it down. Uh, it faded nicely, it went on. Um, just a little tip, when you're doing fading, you're spraying it on there with an airbrush and it was like geez why isn't it going on there it doesn't seem like it's going on there you're spraying it on there put the hair dryer to it you put the hair dryer on there you can watch this thing turn faded like turn the white you know as soon as you start that drying process that's when you notice that it's going to uh, to really stand out so anyways I ended up uh, going with this I uh, got some burnt umber used a little bit of a foam brush took a piece off dab it in there in several places Put it on there, um, then took some dark earth weathering powder, blended it in a little bit, did the roof too. Um, now this uh, this other side here, right there, not kind of happy with that side. It's too uniform. It looks like you know I was trying to design a quilt or something. It's all just exactly kind of the same. You know, it still looks good. I don't hate it, but you know what? It's just something that I can learn on. This was my very first one, and I have to say. It came out quite nicely. So let's just have a good look. Here. And I put the stripes on here. Um, my safety stripes. This is the first time I was doing safety stripes, and I've had a few comments. I was talking to Al there and uh, my buddy Will. They said the safety stripes are a little too big. They're looking a little, little fat, you know. So if you put it to scale, you know, thinking about those little tiny people in HO scale, putting one of those on, like the stripes bigger than a person almost. So. You know, just something to uh, think about when you start doing your cars. But uh, this right here is just proof that if you just follow the steps that Big Al does, and then and, and the tips that uh, you know, not maybe tips, but might I call them try tos. Um, you know, you'll work on it. You'll get it. Like this, I was so happy the way it pleased this one came out. You know, it's a super rusty box car, but I mean, look, it's got the runner on the top. It's an old car, so you know, it's been sitting around for years. It's gonna look good in the yard, sitting there, looking like it's been used. So, anyway, something to think about. Um, well, now that uh, I'm starting to get the handle of it, and now I got some batteries. Um, I'll probably start a video and uh, we'll go right from scratch. We'll do some fading and uh, you know, and, and we'll do it together. Um, any questions or anything, let me know. And uh, you know, I'm gonna keep practicing here, doing it, and then we'll go from there. All right, we'll talk to you again. Thanks.